whatever reason, I just procrastinating. I, I don't know. I don't want to do it or I'm not feeling motivated. Well, then there's a very potent set of tools that you can leverage to overcome states of lack of motivation, overcome procrastination, and indeed can help you deal with things like overthinking as it relates to procrastination and lack of motivation as well. So the way this works is the following. A peak in dopamine is followed by a trough in dopamine. That trough in dopamine is experienced as pain or wanting or craving. That pain that I'm referring to is actually a craving or a wanting. And it's a craving or wanting for a specific state that you would like to achieve that is different than the one that you're in. You want to get out of that trough. That trough is the stimulus for the ongoing release of dopamine that provides the propeller, the motivation to go forward and seek some goal. Okay. So when we are not motivated, when we are in a so-called a motivated state, or when we are procrastinating or when we just sort of can't seem to get in gear, the key to getting out of that pain trough is one of two things. I already told you earlier, you can just wait you can wait till your motivation comes back. And a lot of people do wait. In fact, they procrastinate. They start doing other things that are less painful than the state that they happen to be in when they are, you know, trying to get into gear to go work out because they realize not everyone wants to do that or to study or to have a hard conversation, whatever it is. So seemingly out of nowhere, they start engaging in these activities that normally are not intrinsically pleasurable for them. They're not highly motivated to do them as a replacement for doing the very thing that they quote unquote need to do or ought to do and that they're procrastinating to do. What they're essentially doing here is a mild type of addiction replacement. Now, what's interesting about this dynamic is, first of all, it's extremely common. And second of all, a lot of people will use this as a tactic so that they get very close to the deadline to complete something. And then they go into a sort of pseudo panic and then use anxiety as a way to leverage their mental and physical resources to complete that thing. Now, how do I know the contour of this so well? How do I understand the inner dynamics of it? Well, part of that relates to my work as a neurobiologist and reading the papers that I'll mention to you in a moment. But it also relates to the fact that I am somebody who waits quite a while <laughs> right up until the sort of last minute possible to complete something for activities that I don't want to do. Something I've been working on my whole life. In any case, I'm very familiar with the procrastination process. So how can we overcome procrastination? Well, it turns out that there are findings from within the addiction literature that turn out to be very powerful towards leveraging our way out of procrastination. And it has to do with this. You already know, because I've told you probably a dozen times now, that the depth of the trough after a dopamine peak is proportional to how high that peak was and how steep it was, how quickly that peak occurred. It turns out that not only is the depth of the trough proportional to that, but the rate at which you get out of that trough is proportional to how steep that trough is. Imagine you're in an amotivated state. You're just not feeling motivated. You're procrastinating. You may think, okay, the thing to do here is something. I'll clean the house. I'll take care of some bills. I'll do something. Or I'll just wait. Those approaches, as we talked about before, generally don't work or at least don't work quickly or they lead you right up to the deadline and that's the deadline that forces you to get something done or you just don't get it done and you don't succeed in your goal. That happens a lot as well. However, if you were to take that state of being unmotivated, of procrastinating, and actually do something that's harder than being in that amotivated state, in other words, doing something that's more effortful, you can rebound yourself out of that dopamine trough much more quickly. So for instance, I heard a beautiful lecture recently done by Dr. Anna Lemke at Stanford School of Medicine discussing dopamine and some of the things in her book and some newer findings as well. And somebody in the audience asked her the question, does meditation increase dopamine? Now, earlier we talked about how non-sleep deep rest and yoga nidra has been shown in the scientific literature to increase dopamine. But I also mentioned earlier that classic forms of meditation, whether eyes open or eyes closed, so-called open monitoring or closed monitoring meditation, sitting there, lying there and focusing does not increase dopamine levels per se. However, for most people, especially people who find it hard to meditate or who don't do that practice very often, meditation is effortful. Getting into meditation and staying in meditation is effortful. So if you find yourself in a state of procrastination, 
oftentimes a brief five to 10 minute meditation where you absolutely do not allow yourself to do anything besides close your eyes, focus on your breath. And when your mind drifts, get back to your breath is not only extremely difficult and extremely frustrating unless you're a well-practiced meditator, but it's often difficult and frustrating, not just to do, but to get into that practice and not just to get into that practice, but to maintain that practice for that mere five to 10 minutes, because it's just not a natural state for us to be in. We have to force ourselves. So it is effortful. In fact, it qualifies as a basically available almost anywhere, anytime type of effortful activity that if you dislike it, perhaps even as much as some people dislike deliberate cold exposure, well then, perfect. You now have an additional tool in your kit that you can use anytime you are feeling amotivated and procrastinating. I realize this can be a little bit confusing as a concept, so I wanna go into a bit more detail. Let's imagine that you or somebody else does not like to exercise. You don't wanna exercise and you're trying to get your minimum of five days per week exercise and you're just not motivated to do it. There are a couple of different techniques to doing this. Assuming you've taken care of all the baseline stuff, all the foundational stuff we talked about earlier, and you're just not getting in gear and you find yourself you know, checking your phone or maybe you're tending to some tasks, obviously those things are quote unquote easier for you, meaning they cause less limbic friction than engaging in exercise. The typical advice would be just exercise for one minute, okay? Just get one minute of exercise or five minutes and then use the successful completion of that one or five minutes as a milestone that allows you to then move to the next milestone. And indeed that approach can work. And it's exactly what I'm describing here when I say that you're in a state of lack of motivation or procrastination or both, and you need to put yourself into a more painful, not less painful state. So what do you do? You push up against that friction and you exercise for a short while, and then that pops you out of that trough. That's possible, but for a lot of people, even that won't be possible because they just can't get motivated or they do that one minute or five minutes and then they're just like, okay, I'm still in the trough. I'm not actually feeling that great. In those circumstances, it makes sense to do something that's tangential to the whole path that you're trying to pursue, this goal that you're trying to pursue that is, believe it or not, much worse than just being a motivated. And when I say worse, I don't mean picking some task that normally you don't like to do, but now you're willing to do. I mean, literally thinking about what would be worse than being in this state? Again, without causing yourself tissue or psychological damage, what would be worse? Well, cold water would be worse for many people, very cold water. So the key is to figure out something that for lack of a better way to put it, really sucks, really sucks, and yet is safe. And by doing that, you steepen the trough, you steepen the slope of the trough which we know brings you back to your baseline level of dopamine more quickly. Now, for some people that will be deliberate cold exposure through cold shower, ice bath. And I have to tell you that if you're cringing as I say this, well then there you go. You now have a tool that you know you cringe even when you just think about and therefore represents a great tool for you. So if I'm procrastinating to do something I really need to do, should I just simply wait for that procrastination to evaporate? No. Will it eventually evaporate? Maybe. Will a deadline eventually surface that will trigger me into an anxious or activated state that will allow me to complete what needs to be done? Maybe, hopefully. But better would be to get out of that amotivated state, that state of procrastination quickly. And to do so, you need to leverage something that's painful. Now there are numerous examples I could give and hopefully there are numerous examples that you're thinking about. The key is to have a short list of about five different effortful AKA painful activities that you can employ anytime you're feeling amotivated or in a state of procrastination. Keeping in mind that the goal is not what you accomplish inside of that activity, although it is important that you actually engage in that activity, but it's not about achieving an outcome. It's about forcing your body and mind into a deeper state of pain and discomfort. In other words, taking yourself from that trough that you're already in and steepening and deepening that trough because in steepening and deepening that trough, we know that the return from that trough to normal and even elevated levels of baseline dopamine is going to be faster and more robust. And in doing that, you will quickly find yourself back into a motivated state because not only does it teach you that doing hard things is possible, that's sort of a more of a subjective cognitive learning, 
but it actually taps into the very neurochemical system that allows you to then feel motivated and capable to pursue the larger goal, which is the thing you're really concerned about after all.